Sure, thanks. Uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is uh, Gregory Cherecki. I'm uh, Senior Director of Product Management at uh, Infinidat. Uh, you might have heard about Infinidat. Uh, we do not uh, spend much in marketing where customers are uh, telling each other about ourselves. Uh, we are developing a large-scale enterprise storage systems, and uh, this is why we are coming to the discussion about the OpenShift storage integration. Uh, we have today over six exabytes of capacity deployed globally uh, across the world. Uh, this is an update from the end of last year, so we are uh, uh, now at a bigger scale. Uh, and our customers are large enterprises, uh, banks, insurance companies, uh, PSPs, MSPs, and uh, others. Every deployment that we have is uh, usually a petabyte and above or multi-petabyte deployments. And this is why we are talking about those really large scale uh, installations. Our storage supports block and file. Uh, we provide Fiber channel, iSCSI, NFS connectivity, and SMB for our customers, and uh, this is our main product. Uh, the uh, focus of Infinidat is really going along those uh, lines. We are offering something that meets the needs of customers who are uh, really interested in the very large scale uh, deployments, multi petabyte, very high performance. Uh, we're talking about millions of operations per second and the tens of uh, gigabytes per second throughput of the system uh, while offering capacity at uh, cost much lower than what our competition does. I'm not going to talk about the technical details of the storage system itself. This is something that we will be glad to cover in a separate discussion. Reach out to me or to your Infinidat representative to talk more about it. Uh, I'll shift the gears more towards the OpenShift and Kubernetes in general. When we talk to our customers, and our customers are mainly large enterprises that are starting to consider and starting to look more into the containerized infrastructure and uh, into the Kubernetes in particular, uh, they mention those challenges when as part of uh, their Kubernetes journey. First of all, uh, persistence is not something that was uh, defined from the very beginning in Kubernetes. Most of the workloads, uh, as uh, you probably know, in Kubernetes uh, space were stateless, and everything that required persistence was usually uh, deployed outside of the Kubernetes. However, this is uh, changing. We see more and more customers starting to run uh, stateful applications in Kubernetes, and uh, it's not always simple for them to do this with uh, highly reliable enterprise storage. Another uh, challenge is once you start using the storage uh, systems within your Kubernetes environment, is really how to scale this, uh, going from maybe a few persistent volumes into much bigger amounts and much higher capacity and performance. This becomes uh, challenging, especially for customers in uh, the traditional enterprise environment. Security is another concern that is mentioned by many of our customers, uh, as well as an ability to really move the data between multiple clouds. One of the promises of Kubernetes is an ability to shift the workloads between the on-premises and the uh, public clouds. Uh, and Kubernetes can do this uh, in a great way, but uh, the limiting factor is really an ability to migrate data together with the workload. That's another challenge. And in general, the amount of solutions in this ecosystem is exploding. This is something that also confuses many of our customers, and they really are uh, challenged to find uh, the best solution for their needs. This is also aligned to what we see in CNCF surveys. Uh, they are talking about uh, interviewing customers and reporting about 30% of those customers saying that the storage is a challenge when they start the Kubernetes adoption. And we also believe that this number could be bigger if 
those customers were more uh, down the road of this migration into the Kubernetes and containerized environment. And this is exactly why we are uh, starting to offer the solutions for the containers as well. But before I go into those details, let me introduce one of our customers. I unfortunately can't mention the name, but this is a large uh, consulting company. Uh, and what you can see here is a breakdown of the deployment they have. They're not the largest customer for Infinidad. They are kind of small to medium uh, in our scale. They have only 18 and a half petabytes of storage capacity on Infinidad storage across data centers. And uh, what you can see here is uh, uh, what kind of workloads they run today. In general, Infinibox uh, storage is target for consolidation. So this customer is running a mix of the VMware and AX and Linux and Windows and some backup and some other applications on their seven Infinibox systems across those three data centers. So they are starting to introduce now Kubernetes as part of uh, the, the mix of the workloads that they use, and uh, they started to use our CSI driver, and uh, they were uh, one of the beta customers for it, and uh, uh, one of the architects uh, of this uh, company came with this uh, feedback that really they liked the CSI driver, they liked the integration, and they expand, uh, expect to expand their usage of uh, infinite storage also into the containerized workload as well. So why do customers uh, use uh, Infinibox storage? Uh, we are offering solutions at a very large scale. We can consolidate multiple workloads uh, into the same uh, solution. So it simplifies the infrastructure for customers. We provide standard enterprise features uh, at great scale, things like replication for both synchronous and asynchronous provide the snapshots that can be used uh, and can be taken instantly for the storage, uh, for, for the data, without uh, any degradation or impact on the performance. We support encryption of the data, we support quality of service. We get data, uh, telemetry data from all the systems in the field, and then expose insights on the performance and uh, rec uh, tuning recommendations to customers through our Infiniverse tool. We have different uh, purchasing models for the storage systems, and uh, all those things in, uh, together really result in this very high adoption that uh, brought us to over six exabytes of deployment today. So what we are doing now, we are taking all those uh, features and making them available for customers running Kubernetes as well. Uh, we have launched uh, our general availability for our uh, Kubernetes CSI driver uh, this week. Uh, it basically provides great integration to our customers. Uh, it is uh, free of charge for Infinite customers, available uh, with the source code on the GitHub. Uh, we have uh, the container images for the driver on the Docker Hub and Reddit the container catalog. You can see uh, the screenshots here uh, with both the, the driver itself and the operator for the deployment. And uh, those are the features that we support with the CSI driver. So customers uh, using Infinite Storage can manage multiple Infinibox systems from the same uh, OpenShift or Kubernetes cluster. Uh, uh, they can do dynamic provisioning and deprovisioning of uh, persistent volumes. Uh, those volumes can offer both the file system and row block access. So customers running an application such as Oracle Database in Kubernetes may consume persistent volume using row block interface. We support instant cloning of uh, persistent volumes. So the customer may provision a new persistent volume claim using the existing one, will instantly create uh, a new PV without duplicating capacity. So only the changes that the customer will make will consume uh, storage on, on the Infinibox. We support uh, resizing of the volumes. Uh, we support snapshots. Again, the snapshots are instant, and customers may restore data from a snapshot creating a new PVC. We'll see all those things uh, as part of the demo. Uh, customers may import uh, existing data sets. So if there was a static uh, allocation before, or if customers are migrating from some legacy storage into the Infinibox array, we can take 
an existing uh, persistent volume, import it into the CSI driver and manage it within the CSI driver from that point in time. Infinibox is a unified storage. I think I mentioned this uh, earlier. So we support uh, all those protocols uh, also for Kubernetes. Customers may choose which protocol works best for their environment, whether it's Fiber Channel, iSCSI, or NFS. Uh, we also have a special flavor of the NFS that we call NFS 3Q, capability where we allocate a subset of a file system uh, or a quota limited uh, subdirectory of a file system as a persistent volume. This flavor is uh, intended for customers who need a really large amount of persistent volumes. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of persistent volumes per Infinibox storage array uh, using NFS 3Q method. We also see demand from customers for uh, support of the uh, easier deployment mechanisms for, for the driver. And so we offer both Helm chart and the OpenShift uh, operator, which is available in the operator hub uh, for the deployment of the CSI driver. Okay, uh, let's take a look a little bit under the hood how the CSI driver works. Uh, if a customer has a Kubernetes cluster with a master or maybe a few master nodes and the worker nodes, uh, he will also have the Infinibox storage array or multiple arrays in his session. Infinibox uh, provides separate endpoints for the management access and for the data path. And so when the uh, CSI driver gets deployed, there are a few entities that we create within the cluster. We create a secret uh, that holds the credentials for the Infinibox, which allows the, uh, the driver later on to manage uh, storage. There, we deploy CSI controller as a, a deployment on one of the worker nodes, and we deploy CSI node as a daemon set uh, on each one of the worker nodes. So whenever a uh, persistent volume request uh, claim comes in, uh, the CSI controller uh, talks to the management interface on the Infinibox and provisions this persistent volume as requested by the uh, through the PVC stack. Uh, it may get all the uh, required configuration settings, uh, size, obviously, some other things uh, related to type of provisioning and so on. When a, an application pod uh, gets scheduled on one of the worker nodes, Kubelet will communicate with the CSI node instance on that worker node, which may contact the management interface on the Infinibox, for example, to map a volume to the worker node if this is a block access, a function or iSCSI, or export this persistent volume to the specific worker node if this is NFS. It may also format the persistent volume if this is required to a specific file system, such as XFS, XP3, XP4. And then when the actual pod gets scheduled on this worker node, it may consume uh, storage using this persistent volume. Uh, talking a little bit about the CSI contracts, and it's important uh, when I'll get to the demo, uh, to understand how things work. So there are parts that are handled by the storage provider in Pinibox in our case, or maybe other storage systems. Uh, so we are, uh, and, and there are things that are defined within the Kubernetes cluster itself. So usual uh, way customers are asking, requesting a storage in Kubernetes, a developer may define a persistent volume claim that specifies uh, some details about uh, type of access to the present volume, the size, and the storage class that's going to be used. The storage class defines which driver should be uh, called to provision the present volume, and Kubernetes calls the present volume that talks to the storage array and allocates a chunk of storage. There is a similar uh, set of constructs that was added later in Kubernetes for the snapshots management. Again, uh, very similar to the PVC storage class and PV, there are concepts of uh, volume snapshot, a uh, volume snapshot class, and volume snapshot content, which can, uh, which, is, uh, which is used to provision 
a snapshot of a persistent volume uh, within the storage provider, and we uh, implement those constructs uh, for the internal storage array. Okay. If we zoom out a little bit from a single uh, pod and talk more about the multi-cloud deployment, I mentioned that some of our customers are interested in uh, the multi-cloud uh, deployments and an ability to really uh, share the, the data and share the workloads between the on-premises and public clouds. In addition to the on-prem Infinibox deployments with Infinidat, we offer also a fully managed service that we call Nutrix Cloud. This is a service that we manage deploying it in the data centers adjacent to major public cloud regions. Customers can consume storage for, from Nutrix Cloud and pay for consumption without dealing with the actual uh, physical infrastructure. And so let's assume we have a customer running the, his Kubernetes cluster on premises using Infinibox persistent volumes as the backend. Uh, we can replicate those persistent volumes into the Nutrix Cloud, and uh, we can expose those persistent volumes to uh, applications running in Amazon, Azure, Google, and other public clouds. So if a customer is running an EKS cluster or if he's running an OpenShift cluster in uh, EC2, he may consume uh, persistent volumes out of Nutrix Cloud, whether it's a replica from the on-premises environment or a new persistent volume that is just available from Nutrix. Uh, they can access persistent volumes uh, also from uh, Azure or Google Cloud or IBM Cloud, those are the clouds that we support with Nutrix environment. We also offer an option to support multi-cloud access when the same persistent volume, if this is a read-write many uh, storage like NFS, can be accessed by uh, pods running both in Amazon and Azure and Google at the same time. And this gives some interesting uh, uh, solutions for some customers. And then the data can be replicated back to the on-premises and consumed by the uh, application there. Uh, I'll pause for a second before I go to a demo. Are there any questions so far, Ben? There is one question um, that um, someone was hopeful that you would talk about syncing data between multiple locations. That's part of the demo, or if that's something you can talk to now. Okay, I, I, so I'm not going to talk about this in demo, so I'll cover it now. Uh, in general, Kubernetes itself is not handling the replication of data. So this can be done outside of Kubernetes. And uh, we offer uh, several ways to replicate data using Infinibox uh, uh, replication capabilities. So for example, a persistent volume can be automatically replicated to another Infinibox storage array or to a Nutrix cloud, uh, as was mentioned in the previous slides. And uh, then the replica can be exposed as a persistent volume uh, uh, in a different Kubernetes cluster. So I mentioned at the beginning that one of the options, uh, one of the features that we have is an ability to import an existing persistent volume that was pre-created into CSI driver and, and manage it from that point in time. And this also applies to the replica target. So you can create a replication from one storage array to another storage array. It becomes kind of pre-created persistent volume. Then this persistent volume can be uh, imported into a second uh, CSI driver in a different Kubernetes cluster and managed there from that point in time. Okay. Uh, so I will switch to a demo and uh, uh, I'll try to use a Jupyter notebook uh, to really handle this demo. I hope it will work. I've never tried it before, but I uh, think that might be really good uh, example of using the notebooks. So I was mentioning Kubernetes all the time. It definitely applies to uh, the OpenShift as uh, part of, uh, as, as uh, probably the most popular uh, commercial version of uh, Kubernetes that we see uh, from our, with our customers. We provide a certified uh, operator, which is available on the operator hub for deployment of the CSI driver. So customers may deploy the CSI driver for Infinibox through the operator hub and use it. We support, uh, the CSI driver supports any Kubernetes version starting from 1.14 or OpenShift 4.2. Uh, 
Uh, we also have an earlier uh, solution that we released a couple of years ago, Dynamic Provisioner for Kubernetes, that works since uh, Kubernetes 1.6. Uh, it is not CSI, it's free CSI uh, implementation, so customers who are on older versions may use that. Another note that I wanted to make, uh, CSI is an evolving standard, so uh, there are new features that are being exposed uh, to customers with every Kubernetes release. And uh, some of the features that I'm going to cover here, they may not be available in older versions of Kubernetes. So all those functionality that we'll be covering in the demo are available starting from Kubernetes 1.17 or OpenShift 4.4, which was released just, I think, last week or very recently. Uh, and some other features might be available as an experimental ones and should be enabled through feature gate. Uh, so refer to your documentation, depending on the version that you're running, you may or may not be able to use all those features that I'm going to talk about now. Uh, I'm using kubectl as a, a part of this demo. You can easily replace kubectl with OC for your OpenShift uh, deployments. They work the same way. And uh, uh, I think I mentioned that already, the deployment of the driver can be done for the OpenShift operator or you can help charge whatever the preferences are for the customer. So let's start with the demo. We'll start from uh, just checking the cluster that we have, and uh, I'll run my kubectl get nodes command, and uh, we'll see that my Kubernetes cluster that I have here has three nodes running version 118 right now. Let's check that we have our driver deployed, and we do. Uh, so I'm running this kubectl get pod command. We recommend to deploy a driver in a specific namespace. In this example, I'm using a namespace called iBox for Infinibox CSI driver deployment. And as I said before in the presentation, we have a single instance of the controller and uh, one per cluster, and we have one instance of the node component per worker node. And this is exactly what you can see here. With this three node cluster, we have one instance of the controller and three instances of the node components. Each one is running on a separate worker node. So the next step for us would be to create a storage class for uh, Infinibox. I'll use NFS transport as an example here. As I mentioned before, we can do also iSCSI and Fiber Channel, and we also can do NFS TQ for customers who want to use hundreds of thousands of persistent volumes. So this is the standard definition of the NFS storage class for Infinibox. The name of the storage class will be iBox storage class demo. It refers to the provisioner, which is basically our CSI driver. We want the reclaim policy for the persistent volumes to be deleted. We specify that we support volume expansion feature, so customers can use our driver to uh, resize the persistent volume after it's been created. And then we provide some parameters that are relevant for Infinidat storage. So Infinidat, uh, Infinibox can use, uh, can define multiple pools within the Infinibox that can be used for different applications or to just separate the allocation to different chunks. So we require a different uh, pool for every storage class that you define in Kubernetes. And here we specify the pool name on the Infinibox. Uh, for the NFS provisioning, we define a network space. This is another construct of the Infinibox storage. It's basically a set of uh, endpoints that will be used to access data on the Infinibox. Uh, we allocate several IPs, and uh, in, in this example for NFS access, those are basically your NFS server IPs, and the CSI driver will uh, randomly choose one of those IPs every time the mount is done to the persistent volume. We provide some other parameters, like we want to do thin provisioning for storage. We use NFS as an access. We may specify uh, mount options for the persistent volumes uh, that will be used when the worker nodes will mount persistent volume. We can specify export permissions for the persistent volumes as well. Again, we are talking about the NFS part here, so I can limit, for example, uh, access to all clients or all clients within the specific subnet or uh, other uh, export rules that you may expect for NFS. And we refer to the uh, secret name that can be used to provision storage within this uh, pool on this Infinibox. 
So once we define this uh, storage class and I run the kubectl create command, my uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster deploys the storage class, and I can see that the storage class has been just created and it's available. So the next step for me will be to create a persistent volume claim. So I define a persistent volume claim, call it ibox PVC demo. I will use a different namespace for those uh, PVCs, a demo in this case. The persistent volume claim is uh, as read write many access modes, so it can be shared between multiple pods if needed. And I'm asking about uh, one gigabyte of capacity allocated within this uh, through this uh, storage class. So I can do create for the PVC, and if I run the kubectl get PVC for this PVC, I'll see that the PVC exists, and it already it is already bound to a persistent volume. So this persistent volume is, uh, okay, my demo gods are with me, I guess. Uh, we'll check it out in a second. Uh, so the persistent volume, uh, oh, I basically have to change the name. That's why it's showing me the wrong result. Uh, so the persistent volume has been created. Uh, this is the name of the actual uh, file system on the Infinibox that was created uh, following the PVC create request. You can see that this is a one GB byte, read write many, and it's bound to the claim. So now once we have the persistent volume there, I can go ahead and create my snapshot class because I want to start doing the snapshots. So the snapshot class defines again which CSI driver should be used to manage snapshots, and I refer to our Infinibox CSI driver. I can create the snapshot uh, class, and I can check that the snapshot class exists. So we just created this iBox snapshot class demo, and now I can go and create a snapshot. So again, the snapshot would be another PV, uh, construct in uh, Kubernetes. I define a YAML file, which is uh, referring to the volume snapshot kind. I name the snapshot as ibox PVC snapshot demo. Again, this is a namespace uh, uh, related construct. I will use ibox snapshot plus demo snapshot class to do this. And uh, the source for the snapshot would be the PVC that we created in the previous stage. So if I run now this uh, command and I create my snapshot, I can check the status of the snapshot, and this is what I see, that my snapshot exists for five seconds. And now I want to check the volume snapshot uh, content name for the snapshot. So this is the internal name of the snapshot content that has been created. I can uh, check it also from the volume snapshot content side and see that this volume snapshot content is available for 27 seconds. Uh, behind the scenes, the driver calls Infinibox API and creates an instant uh, read-only snapshot of the source volume, which is stored on the Infinibox. It consumes zero space, but it's instantly available for future restores. So now let's assume we want to restore a PVC from the snapshot. Uh, I can define a new PVC, a uh, no, new persistent volume claim. Uh, I'll call it iBox Snapshot PVC Restore Demo 2. It will use the same Infinibox uh, storage class, and the data source for this PVC will be the volume snapshot that we created in the previous stage. So if I create now this new persistent volume claim as a restore, I can see that this PVC has been created. And what happens under the behind the scenes? We uh, take our snapshot that was created before, make a clone of the snapshot, which is a writable uh, copy, accessible for applications. So basically, what we did, we instantly created a copy of the original uh, snapshot and made it writable and available for the customers. Again, this writable copy consumes zero space until customers start making changes. So it makes the overall capacity allocation on the Infinibox extremely efficient and uh, easy to use. 
We also allow creation of uh, instant clones. So without going through the backup, uh, through the snapshot stage, customer may define a new uh, PVC that would be uh, creating a clone directly from the source PVC without going through the snapshot. So again, I can define a PVC. I specify the data source to be an existing PVC demo as opposed to the snapshot as in the previous step. And if I run this uh, kubectl create command and I see that my clone has been created and it's available also for applications. So let's see how it works with application. I can have my application pod uh, definition here that would launch a busybox image and mount our iBox PVC demo PVC as TMP data. So I can now schedule uh, this pod. If you remember this uh, demonstration that I had for how the CSI driver works, now we have called a, a CSI node component on the relevant worker node. It made uh, the magic and exposed the, the PV to the pod, uh, to the worker node. And then when the pod starts on the worker node, we can see that it is running now. And I can connect to this pod uh, using kubectl exact command and check that my TMP data is really pointing to the NFS mount on the InfiniBox as I would expect. And we can see that it was really uh, done successfully. So the CSI driver took one of the IPs from the NetSpace on the InfiniBox. It used the export path for the file system and it is available under slash TMP slash data for the pod. Uh, consume the data. So this is a kind of conclusion of the demo. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention is uh, how it can be done in a more automatic way. So this is an example of provisioning a MySQL database as a pod using Helm a chart for MySQL. Uh, and one thing that can be done here if the customer wants to provision a MySQL database uh, using persistent volume from the InfiniBox, I may specify here a reference to the storage class uh, that we created, and using this reference, the Helm will provision a pod with MySQL database and will create a persistent volume on the InfiniBox using the storage class that we defined. Uh, any questions about the demo before I go to summary slide? Um, I have a quick one, and I apologize if you ran through this quickly. Um, I think you mentioned that there was an operator for this um, CSI driver um, in operatorhub.io, or where can they find um, the driver itself? So, yes. So you can install the operator through the operator hub. If you go in the OpenShift uh, deployment and you go to the operator's operator hub, mm -hmm. Uh, okay. view, you'll search for the InfiniBox and you'll find the InfiniBox operator. You can use it to deploy the All right. driver and then assuming you have the InfiniBox storage deployed in your environment, you can do all those things that I showed here. Okay, so it's in the uh, in the catalog operator hub um, embedded inside of OpenShift, but I, yeah, I was checking. Uh, I think I, what I misheard you saying was I, I thought it might be also in operatorhub.io, so um, this okay. operator yeah, not yet. Coming not yet. soon, hopefully, yeah. There you go, perfect. Exactly, yep. Okay, uh, so are there any other questions about the demo? So far, not, not nobody's any questions. So that means you've done a good job with the demo and documenting, so thanks. Awesome, awesome. So just to summarize, uh, we are uh, always thinking about the customer's needs uh, that especially for the customers who operate at a very large scale. We also uh, come from uh, this cloudy perspective, even though we are operating in many cases in the on-premises. Uh, we are selling a lot of systems to service providers, uh, in addition to our other enterprise customers in the financial and insurance uh, industries and, and retail and others. We provide solutions such as Nutrix Cloud that allow customers to run uh, uh, their storage, to use the storage not only on premises but also from the public clouds. And we see this growing interest from customers for the extensive uh, integration for the enterprise storage that they're used to, 
now into the containerized environment. This is becoming uh, more and more important, and we expect that this will be even more critical for them uh, in the future. And one thing that we are uh, doing now is really helping them to address the storage uh, aspects of the Kubernetes adoption and OpenShift adoption with the CSI driver. What you can see here at the uh, bottom uh, of the slide is really the, this, uh, we were showing that scalability aspect of our solution. I was mentioning that with NFS 3Q, we can go to hundreds of thousands of persistent volumes. And this is a screenshot from uh, one of uh, our uh, deployments where we have over 100,000 of persistent volumes and there is a single Infinibox storage array behind the scenes. Uh, I'm available for uh, future questions. If there are uh, questions now, I'll be glad to take them. If there are uh, questions coming later on, I'm available this email. We'll be glad to talk about other Infinibox solutions or about the Seaside driver and OpenShift integration in particular.